We're going to read our text from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 until 49. So we are going to read this, uh, and I'm going to request the congregation to please read all these verses all together from verses 44 until 49. If you are there. Amen. Okay, okay. Ready? Ready? Read. Amen. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful, Lord, and thankful for you this evening. Once again, oh God, we are going to uh, study and share your, uh, share your word, oh God, this evening. Let the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be lifted up in our midst, oh God, as we continue to celebrate our mission. Scan parents, oh God, be the one to be exalted alone and be the one to be honored, oh God, in our life. We just pray, oh Lord, I just pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to continue to empower me and continue to enlighten your people through thy words, oh God. And be the one to be exalted, Lord, in our life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <coughs> Amen. So uh, this, this morning we were able to listen to the message from uh, Peter Gomer and Peter Rilson about what is mission and why mission. And this is a very important thing for us to know as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are the one responsible in doing this. As we continue to obey the Lord in our life, let us continue to abide with what the Lord is giving to us, especially upon his word so this evening i am going to uh, to share to you i am not i am the one from uh, i am i was given on to preach on how to do mission how to do mission and this is from uh, i am going to share from the book of luke chapter 24 verse 44 until 49 so here we can we have heard the, the message this morning and to be honest with you i am blessed with what i have heard about the mission And also, I am also grateful for, it is my first time preaching in Mission Scan Parents like Peter Gomer. <laughs> okay, so this evening, I, I, will, I am going to share to you the, the, this message, and I hope we'll be able to be reminded of what we need to do as a believer as we continue to share the gospel to the people. You know what? Just like Pastor Joel a while ago said, and I agree, totally agree with him, a lot of people, maybe millions or billion, that until now they didn't hear the right doctrine or even the salvation for them to go to heaven and these people will go to hell and you know what this saddens my heart that a lot of people they know the, the name of Christ right they know the name of Christ and they even call their, themselves Christian but these people will go to hell you know why because they are not receiving the right message from the word of God They're receiving the wrong doctrine about the salvation from the, from the Bible. And you know what? These people, it is for them, if they really know what will happen to them, I don't think that they will reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Or, or if I may say, they don't really don't understand what will happen to them. For us, a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, we know what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross. So this morning, I am going to share to you on how to do mission. Been, let me just start from this. As, I don't know if you know the song, uh, the lyrics from, I get this from a song. As the song says, across the street or around the world is what? The mission is still the same. What does it mean? It means that the message, the message is to share the gospel or the good news. We are bringing this. We are the, the one being, we, are, we, are, we were given the task to share the gospel and to share the good news to these people. The message of this gospel is that we need to bring them that what we have learned from the Bible. So let me go to my first point this evening. My first point is that the Word of God is the source of our mission. The Word of God is the source of our mission. Let us read 
Uh, Luke 24, verse 44 says, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses in, and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Here we cannot, you know what, here the word of God was given to us. And we need to know that this is the source where, 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 we, where we do the mission. We are bringing to them a bringing them good news. We are bringing them the word of God. And when we do this, this is where we get our message from the Bible. This is where we get it. And you know what? We cannot, one thing that we need to know as believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you will go to verse 45 first before I continue. Verse 45 says, Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scripture pertaining to those people, to those believers. You know what? With our own strength, with our own wisdom, we, there is nothing that we, there's no way to, for us to understand the word of God. It's only by the enablement of God in our life. And one more thing that I want, I want us to know that freedom is not given to us to make our own message. We are not be given freedom to bring our own message. We are bringing the good news. What's that good news? The message from the Bible, the message from the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that is what we bring to them. In verse 24, if we, uh, verse 27 says here, in Luke 24, 27 says, please listen to this, it says, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself so here we can see that it is not our own message it is the message concerning the lord jesus christ as we give to them on how to do or, or how to do missions as a believer of the lord jesus christ the message is the fulfillment of god's word in the life of our lord jesus christ and we have seen that and i will give you some verses as we continue with the sermon this evening let us go in genesis chapter 3 verse 15 it says here, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy seed, and thou shalt bruise his seed. And this is a prophecy about the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is about the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. In number 20, 21, verse 9 says, And Moses made a serpent brass, and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man when he, he beheld when he when beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. This is the time when when this uh, this uh, Israelite uh, rebelling against God and God allowed this serpent to to beat them to be by, beaten and then where they're beaten by this thing they will die. But you know what? The Lord God made a solution and he, he commanded Moses to make a brazen serpent right that if they were beaten they have to, they, they, all they need to do for them to be healed is just look at the brazen serpent but still they did not because of the hardness of their heart they did not look and some of them or more of them died and we can see this in the book of john chapter 3 verse 14 and 15. and as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up that whoever believed believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. This is one thing that, was, that happened 2,000 years ago. That for a man not to go to hell, that we need to tell them that for them not to go to hell, they need to look on, on the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing more and nothing, nothing less. And we have seen that. Even in Psalms, I just want us to see, I just want you to see all these promises that, that were, are, are fulfilled in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Psalm 22 verse 1, it says here, My God, my God, why thou hast forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my, of my rowing? <clears throat> and we can see this in the book of Matthew 27 verse 46. And about the night hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. And that is to say, My God, my God, why, does, why hast thou forsaken me? 
And I want you to see here what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross. I hope and I pray we will be always be reminded of the gravity of what the Lord Jesus Christ had experienced in the cross, on the cross of Calvary. Here we can see, in this verse we can see that this is an expression of ab abandonment. He was abandoned by the Father because of the sin that was put on him because of us. It is our sin that he is bearing on the cross, not his sin, because he is, you don't have sin. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's sinless. But because of our sin, the abandonment of the Father, and as I have read before in uh, Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10, that even the Father was pleased to bruise him because of our sin. The reason why I'm telling you this is just for us to see the fulfillment of the Word of God in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. And for us to know the gravity of what He did for us. This is something that we need to be reminded always in our life. That He suffered for us. And this is the message that we are bringing the people. So that they will not go to hell. Because of our sin, He died. And after that, he clothed us with his righteousness. Later on, we're going to see more on this. In Isaiah 74, verse 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. It happened 2,000 years ago, and it is the fulfillment of God in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is where we get the message to bring to the people that there is hope that if they are hopeless, especially in this world, we can see that there is hope. Amen. And we are bringing this hope in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And one more verse, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, a very familiar verse. You know this, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And this is the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through these verses, we can see the fulfillment of God's word concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to see here that the message that we are giving, it is the message of the Lord. And it is not us. And for us, we must be clearly known in this. You know what? As a believer, we need to know the Bible. Later on, I am going to be more on this. It is very important for us on how to do mission for us to do mission, we need to know the Bible. We need to know what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us. Because we are witnesses. And whenever we share the gospel to the people, we are bringing the message of God and not our mess own message. Because in us, there is nothing that we can do. All we need to do is to give ourselves freely to the Lord, put it in upon his, uh, submit ourselves unto him, and let him use us and bring the good tidings to the people and bring the good news to the people and this brings me to my point number two i hope i will be able to abide to the 30 minute rule <laughs> okay point number two the subject i want you to see this the subject of our mission is the work of jesus on the cross the subject of our mission is the work of Jesus on the cross. Let me read Luke 24, verse four, uh, uh, 46 to 47. And it says here, And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved, it means necessary, Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You know what? We are telling these people the death, the burial, and the, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But I want us to see here what Jesus Christ did on the cross. When he was hanging on that cross, what is in, on, what is on his, mind, in his mind? It is us. Saving us from a, a sure death. Grabbing us from the sliding, going to hell. And that is what he did on the cross. And I want us to see here, without the, the death of Christ, there will be no repentance of sin, and there will be no remission of sin. And we need to know that it is all because of what he did on the cross of Calvary. And here we can see the importance of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? You know what, church? For us, we need to be 
But we have to know these things, what he did. Because if we ourselves do not know this, how can we share the gospel to the people? If you yourself, you don't understand what Jesus Christ did on the cross, how can we do mission? It is important for us to know this. It is important because it is given to us through the Bible, through the Word of God. And I hope and I pray that we, we are going to see the importance of that, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? Sometimes for people, for Christians, we, we commonly hear, commonly hear that Jesus died on the cross. But do we know the gravity of the things that he suffered on that cross? That when he died on the cross, bearing our sin, and because of that, even the Father, which is in heaven, abandoned him. God the Father turned his back on him because he cannot save him on that way. You know why? It is because of our sin. And for us as a believer of the Lord Jesus, we should be always reminded of this. What does it say in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22? It says, and almost all things, almost all things by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission of sin. If Christ did not shed his blood on the cross of Calvary, there will be no forgiveness of sin. We will all go to hell. You, you know, listen to this. How can this holy, righteous, just God reconciled to the sinner. Just take, take a moment to think of that. How can this holy, righteous, just God to be reconciled with the sinner? And those things, and those things happen through the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through his death, we were able to be reconciled with God. It's only we cannot be, we cannot be with him. He's righteous. He's just. And because he is just, he needs to judge us. And when God judges us, he will judge us death. And we will pay for our sin. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And that are the things that we need to see. What he did on the cross. In Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it, given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that make it an atonement for the soul. Those times, an, an, an innocent animal need to die on, beha- on the behalf of the Israelite people. But listen to this in Matthew chapter 26 verse 28 says, For this is my blood of the New Testament. This was happened in the Last Supper, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Christ's blood was shed for the payment of our sin and for us not to go to hell. And I hope and I pray it will give us a remind, it will remind us that, that the Lord Jesus Christ died on your place, on my place, because of our sin. And because of that, we were reconciled to the Lord Jesus Christ, to, the, to God, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ's blood is offered for the forgiveness of our sin on the cross. There's something that I want you to say, I want you to say, and I want to say that this is not something for us to always to be reminded, oh, the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross. No, we need to see the, important, the importance of this, what he did on the cross. And for us to do mission, we need to understand that. If we don't understand that, how can we share the gospel to the people? You know what, this morning, just like uh, Peter Gomez says, or some people, when they said, oh, oh, I am saved because I raised my hand. Imagine that. Oh, I, I am saved because I prayed. But without understanding on the, what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross, these people will go to hell. Expecting they will go to heaven, but they will slide straight to the hell because of the wrong message that they have received in their life. But for us, as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, we should know this and we need to be familiar with this. I am saying that we need to be good. No, at least you know what happened, what Jesus Christ did on the cross, did on the cross for us. 
And for us, we will be able to do mission. We will be able to share the gospel to these people. Acts 13 verse 38 says, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sin. Imagine that. Because of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are now being pardoned. We are now being forgiven. Imagine this. If the Lord Jesus Christ did not do that for us, if the love of God did not, was not shed you know, upon our life, what will happen to us? Do you, think hell is a, do you think hell is a joke? That's something we can say, oh, some people, even, even those uh, people in the internet, in the YouTube say, oh, I, I think I will enjoy hell. They do not know what they are saying. They don't have any idea what is hell. This is why we need to know what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross. The subject of our mission is to know what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And we will not be able to do mission if we don't know this in our life. You know what? For me as a, as a preacher, as, as a, a leader, as a, as a believer, I'm still growing in the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We cannot exhaust the word of God in our life. The word of God is always fresh. So we need to be always reminded of this. It says here, the work of Christ on the cross directs us to pro proclaim forgiveness from the penalty of sin to the repentant sinner. And you know why? Let us go to Luke chapter 24 verse 48. It says here, Luke 24 verse 48, and ye are witnesses of these things. See? Okay. Oh, how can we be witness? We, did, we, we are not there. Yes, we are not there. <laughs> Physically. But we have the Bible. As a believer, we read the Bible and now we are witnesses. We are witness of what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross. The reason why we do this is because we are witnesses. Witnessing for the Lord Jesus Christ. You know that when, you still remember that when we, whenever we go to how we go give the tracks, oh, let us go witnessing. In the Philippines, we always say that, oh, let us go witnessing. What does it mean? We are going to witness for the Lord. We are going to tell these people what he did for us. And that is the message. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, don't worry. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we, a very familiar verse. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Power was given to us. What does it mean? We were given strength and we were given ability to do that. But that ability and, and strength is not from us. It is from the power of the Holy Ghost Amen. that was given to us for us to do and to share the good news to these people. So I hope and I pray it is, uh, it is a clear thing for us that it is because, the power, because of the power of the Holy Ghost. Later we will go there more on that and let me go to my point number three. Okay, point number three. The scope of our mission is the whole world. And I will not be stay long on this. But I would just want us to know and I just want us to see here. It says the scope of our mission is the whole world. Let us read Luke 24 verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You know what? We will not be able to go unto all those nations. We can only share the gospel or share, share to bring this good news to these people where we are. Across the street or around the world, the mission is still the same. But I want you to see this. The message is the same that we are wherever we are. But for us, how can we do this? How can we go among all nations? It says it's beginning at Jerusalem. We are not in Jerusalem. We are in Shimri. But how can we do that? And here we can see it. We can see it is possible for us to do that. Here we can see. We can see our faith promise works. You see that? We may be, we are, we are in ship, but if we support missionaries who are really 
being faithful to share the gospel to the people, we are also doing witness, witnessing, or we are witnessing to those people also. But later on, Peter John will be uh, much more on this, so I will not stay long in this. So I'll, it says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20, it was sung a while ago, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. world of the world. Amen. Here, we need to make disciples. This is what the message is. So I'm not going to uh, stay long, in, but for us, what does it mean is that the gospel should be preached to the whole world. To the whole world. Because if not, people will be in hell and stay there for eternity. If we enjoy the eternity in heaven, they will not enjoy hell because they will be there for eternity. Imagine that. Imagine that. Let me just give you an example. For example, my son wasn't able to hear the gospel and he died. He will go to hell. How painful is that for me if he will die not knowing the Lord Jesus Christ? And even us, our loved ones. But not only that, even these people, that's why you know when people die, we feel our, our heart is saddened because we know what will happen to them. This is a very familiar this is a very familiar word that we listen to them. When people die, they will say, Oh now you are now you will now rest in peace. If people are not saved and they did not accept the Lord Jesus Christ or believe or trust on the Lord Jesus Christ, they will not rest in peace. Yeah. They will be in hell forever. They will be tortured. You know why? Because of rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ in their life. So I hope you can see the importance of bringing the gospel to the place where we are and even to the other nations. And that is how we do the, the, the mission. And let me go to my last point, number four. My point, point, uh, last point, number four says, the fulfillment of our mission relies on the power of the Holy Spirit. When we need to, when, when we need to know that, just uh, even uh, Brother, I think Brother Gomer that mentioned that, that when we, we just want them, we cannot convict them. It is the Holy Spirit that convicts these people for them to come to repentance and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So here, in Luke 24, verse 14, and says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until, the, until ye be endured with power from on high. In John 14, verse 16 and 17, it says here, verse 16, And I will pray the Father, and you shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. So here we can see these people do not know. They don't have any idea about these things. But for us, we will be empowered through the power of the Holy Spirit because he, what? He dwelleth in us. That the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us. And whenever we do mission, when, when we do this, it is him who gives the conviction. It is us we give the speaking. We share the gospel to the people because we do not know who will be saved. We do not know that. But we share the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit will convict them to repent of their sin. And we cannot do this with our own might. We cannot do that. And I know we understand that. I will read again Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says here, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Here we can see that as a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit will work in us as we continue to trust and submit ourselves to Him. You know what? I have, I have heard this uh, quotation says, you know what? Mission is not about the numbers of people where in your place or how many missions you have opened. Mission is about faithfulness in the Lord. It is our faithfulness. 
And if you be faithful to him, he will be the one to bring people to his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And without him, we cannot do anything. That's why whenever we do this, you know, when we go to, to, when, when we go to the villages, when we share the word of God, it, it seems like, like nothing happening. But you know what? It is the power of the Holy Ghost will work in their life. It is the power of God that will work in their life. Our mission is to proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sin in Christ's name, in Christ's name to all nations. How to fulfill it? It is in the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. It is the power of God in our life. So I want you to see this. This is something that we need to be, to be thankful to God. We are not just sharing the gospel, but we ourselves experiencing the power of God by submitting ourselves to Him. And we can see that. There is no way for us to be able to see. There is no way for us to see what God is doing in our life if we will not submit our life to Him. We rely on the power of the Holy Ghost in doing these things. That's why you know what? Mission, is, mission will not be able to succeed if we are not putting it under the power of the, the, of the hand of God. Submitting our life and expecting that the Lord will be the one to move in our life. In conclusion, let me just give you three things. It says here, make sure that you can represent the basic plan of salvation with appropriate scripture references. It means to say that we ourselves should be, should be familiar with this. We should know what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us. Because you know what? How can you serve someone you do not know? If you ask me the personality of my wife, even though I'm sleeping, I can explain it to you. Even though I'm sleeping, I can explain it to you. But someone that I do not know, how can I explain to you if I do not know that person? Same thing with us. If we are not familiar with what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross or with the Bible, how can we share the gospel? We'll be, we'll be just like sitting ducks if we will not be able to know what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us. It says, number two, God Ask God to keep your focus on your mission. Don't get sidetracked. You know what? In, in this life, we cannot avoid problems. But there is a sure thing that we need to do. That God commanded us to share the gospel Amen. to the nation. One more thing. Remember, our mission is to be a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are witnessing for him because we have known him personally in our life. Amen. Amen. Let us all stand up and let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this evening.